Hi everyone, I'm I am Jeff Lawton. I'm going to look at a game from played two days ago from the final round of the Aeroflot Open uh, a tournament which took place in, in Moscow. And uh, going in uh, into the final round, there were, there were two players in sixth, two Azerbaijan players, Suleimanli and Mamedov. And then there was a group of uh, eight players uh, behind them, half a point behind, on five and a half. Uh, in the final round, uh, uh, Suleimanli, who's, who's only 14 years of age, by the way, quite astonishing. He was he was playing against his compatriot Mamedov, and they had a, a draw in the uh, in a Karo Khan. Difficult game ended as a, as a draw, and then um, the remaining one players were battling it out against sort of against one another on the, the next four boards. And if we just spin ahead to the the final standings. Uh, Two of the players on uh, five and a half managed to win, which was uh, Chitambaram Aravind, is the game we're going to see. And uh, Renat Jumabayev, he also won a, won a really nice game as well. So they joined uh, this, this big group of four of them on uh, six and a half uh, in equal first. And Suleimanli, uh, Aydin Suleimanli, won it on, on the tie break. I think the first tie break uh, score of TB1 on here is how many blacks they had out of the nine games, uh, in which one he, he, he was equal with Jamabayev, who also had five blacks. But he was it was quite a, a bit ahead in terms of the average rating of, I think it's basically the average rating of opponents the second uh, time break. So we're going to look at this game, which um, is, a, is a good good positional game, so and I, I enjoyed watching it. I was watching the, the games live. Um, I think it was uh, Sergei uh, Shipov. I don't understand Russian, but it was... It looked like an entertaining commentary, and um, to win this game, Chitambaram opened d4. Indian Grandmaster against the, the Russian Grandmaster, Shigurov, who played knight f6, c4, c6, knight c3, and d5. So we have a Slav, and Aravind played the exchange line, which has a lot more sting than it, than it perhaps appears. I mean, recently there was a game, uh, I think another Indian Grandmaster bid it in, um, in the Prague Masters, uh, won, a, won a very good game against uh, Alicera Ferruja, a sort of 16-year-old up-and-coming star, so it's a definitely a, a dangerous line. Knight c6, e3, and the bishop comes outside the pawn chain as well, bishop f5, and now queen b3, uh, targeting this, so back played. What's the sort of standard reply to this, rather than rather than queen b6, which would weaken uh, pawns? Play queen a4 check. And bishop back to d7, and now queen c2. So the result of White's manoeuvre, uh, he's managed to sort of you know, get the queen onto this diagonal. E6 by Sugarov. Uh, knight f3. And now knight h5, which is um, the sort of the uh, less common move of, uh, of, of blacks. I mean, it has been played quite a bit before. The usual moves are simply um, developing this way, or um, all this, as you sort of might expect, just to develop like that. This decide this is a move uh, that sort of hunts down the bishop. At the same time, the knight uh, is slightly offside. Now bishop e5 rather than bishop g5, but I think they're more or less equally played. Knight back to c6, coming after the bishop. And a3, so that uh, we can play here without being disturbed by um, knight b4. Uh, bishop to e7. And bishop to d3. And now knight e5. Uh, the usual move, uh, sort of main line, seems to be f6, uh, bishop back, f5, and then bishop e5, and then black, black castles, and the and the game goes on. That that tends to be the the main line that that people play. Uh, knight knight takes e5 is actually quite unusual. Um, uh, Chitambaram captured with his knight, uh, so. You know, it looks reasonable for Black. He's managed to gain the two bishops. But we'll see how the game goes. He now played knight f6 again. Uh, he's not going to weaken himself with f6. Well, actually, he couldn't uh, play it there. 
and now f4 from uh, Aravind, g6, and now g4. So he's already sort of deciding to advance and gain space. It's almost a bit like a Hillsbury attack with the pawns, uh, the pawns like this, and the knight on e5. So Black has to be careful that he doesn't sort of end up with, uh, you know, in a bind. In fact, it might be a little bit late to uh, try and stop it at the moment. Uh, he played uh, bishop to c6, and now h4. So uh, Aravind is sort of expanding on the king's side, and his plan is to put the pawns on the on the dark squares. It's uh, sort of making you know sort of an opponent to this bishop. You put your pawns on the black squares. It makes up for the fact you haven't got a, white, a black square bishop yourself, and your own white square bishop can sort of roam free in between your own pawns. So a, a good strategy. So he played knight d7, Sugirov, in order to. That was why he played bishop c6 to give the the knight an escape square when it's hit by g5. And now he sort of left perhaps a good decision, leaving black with um, sort of the minor pieces perhaps not on such great squares. He keeps him cramped. And white's got more space, and at the same time, of course, he's protected protected the attacked pawn on h4. Sugarov played rook c8. Uh, sort of them thematic move g5. And it's becoming clear that you know white has got a bind on the position on this. Um, and the rest of the game is just really sort of a very good um, exploitation of this by um, by Aravind, um, you know, in a, in a big last round game. Um, and it, perhaps black's opening has gone a, a little bit wrong, unless I'm just annotating it by result, which um, we, we tend to do. But I think black is in a, in a difficult position because white um, can sort of keep advancing on the king's side and black's stuck for space. So Sugarov played bishop to d6 and h5, sort of pushing ahead. Now we're, we're threatening this and capture there twice due to the pin on the h file. So rook g8, but now the now the uh, the white rook is going to be able to command uh, the h file. So black is getting, you know, position is becoming very passive and and short of short of space. Uh, so we played king e2, um, uh, joining the rooks together. a6, h takes g6, h takes g6, and now rook h6. So his plan is at some point he's going to start targeting, uh, start targeting this sort of structure, particularly the g6 square and the and uh, the f7 square. So. Queen e7 from Sanan, and now Queen b3. Sort of just reminding Black that he can play on play on both sides of the board, and it's quite a handy move because it it um, you know it keeps b6 covered, stops the knight hopping to here too easily. And now King d8, sort of you know wisely deciding to move the king uh, out of the way. Knight d1. Uh, good knight manoeuvre, so he's sort of intending to play um, play the knight round, uh, either hopping in here later or you know, perhaps this one here and after takes, f takes, and then try and get this knight in here. So that's sort of his, his plan. And king to c7. Knight f2. And now rook h8. So black uh, releases the pressure a bit by trading off one pair of rooks, rook h6, and rook takes h6, and uh, rook g8. So basically, Sanan is, you know, he knows that you know, he, uh, the two bishops are not really going to do a great deal in this very blocked position. I mean, unless this bishop can get round the back, then um, it's hard to target. Well, white's only got this pawn that you can really target directly. There's, there's no pawn breaks for black, and uh, white's just got a, a lot of space and a general grip. But he's, he's obviously, you know, by now, just trying to hang on with with passive defence. So we'll, we'll see how this goes. Queen c2, queen e8, uh, moving the queen over to the king's side. Queen c1, and bishop to f8, chasing the rook away. The rook goes forward. Rook h7, bishop to g7. So perhaps his idea is to play um, 
queen f8 and then and then rook h8. Knight to g4, just carrying on the same the same plan. Queen f8 and now sort of nice move b4 because um, it's sort of you know just reminding black that he's, he's actually got to be careful here because if the uh, uh, you know if white had chance then he could play um, you know, perhaps not right now because uh, b4 is on pre but then here and here and uh, the pin down the b the c file would win the bishop so Aravind played. Uh, sorry, um, Sugarov played king to b6 to come out of the way of that. So he could have tried, uh, for example, if, if rook h8, he can play the, the plan I just mentioned. Um, I mean, rook, rook takes h8 is also possible, but um, another line is, is actually rook g7. And after queen g7, then uh, a4, and there's no, um, there's no way to actually stop b5 here. And you could play... Uh, Something like rook c8, and b5, then king b8, then, then b takes c6, rook takes, and now white's sort of queen a3. Now white's managed to open up the position in his favour, and sort of the queen's about to come charging into uh, to e7. So if black tried queen f8, heading for an ending, uh, this, is, this is in white's favour because now we sort of start to see that this. This pawn is very weak, and white white can kick us off. And if, you know, if black tries to defend with um, with rook c7, then it's you know it's attacked twice and can't be defended. So if black instead tries to stay active, uh, something like this can occur. Knight h6, rook a3, knight h takes f7, rook a4, and then knight g6. And white's well ahead in this race. It's uh, the g pawn. Against the uh, the a pawn in the race, just take this a bit further. Um, so you take this off, then bishop g6, rook a2, king f3, and then a5, just to show that white's you know, a long way ahead. So the plan now is to play um, here, and even if even if black came behind, managed to get behind the pawn, it'd still be knight g5, blocking, uh, and if a4, g6. Black has to come and try and stop the pawn. G7. He must come back to stop, but then knight d6. Uh, only square for the rook on the 8th rank is uh, d8. And then knight b5 stops the pawn and, uh, and white queen's next move. Just a really long line, so sorry for that, but it does show that um, you know in these, in these sort of uh, races on both sides, they even seem to favour white. So in the game... Sugarov played the move, king b6, which come out of the pin, and now at last um, knight fe5. So um, <clears throat> there's an immediate threat here. If we, immediate threat is to play um, queen c6 check, b c6, knight d7, and then and then take the queen. So um, black has to do something about this. So he played knight takes e5. Uh, I mean, you could try this instead of sort of giving White the, um, the the strong bind that he got in the game. You could try and sit sit tight with Queen E7, uh, but you know one strong line for White is then to play Knight F6. Now there's a, there's a couple of captures for Black against uh, that. We can't move the Rook, uh, which is attacked because because the Bishop's on pre. But say we take with the um, the Knight, then we can play Gf6. Again, we can't play um, queen takes because if uh, I think there's queen c6 and knight d7, then knight f6 and then rook f7 would win. Just quickly show that line. Queen here, uh, knight check, the king's got to go to the back rank. Knight f6, bishop f6, and then after rook f7 check, uh, we're, we're winning a piece for white. Um, and if you play um, bishop takes f6, then we can play rook f7, uh, queen d8, and then, uh, well, you've got to play queen d8 if, unless you want to drop the bishop, but then queen c5 would be mate. And if in this position instead black tries the move, uh, bishop captures on f6, 
then we can play uh, gf6. And this time again, if, if queen f6, you're running into uh, by now familiar theme, uh, winning winning a couple of pieces on that occasion. And, if, and again, if, if knight f6, then rook f7. And again, queen d8 walks, well, queen d8 is the only move to prevent, uh, uh, to hold on to the knight. Uh, but if you make that move, and again, queen c5 is made. So, uh, so a queen, so it just shows that even trying to sit tight with queen e7 is not going to make any difference because it's just trying to look for ways to, you know, avoid the bind which black got into. So, but there's no way, it doesn't seem to be any way to do that. So we played knight e5, and now the, uh, the nice move queen c5 check from Aravind. Queen takes c5. Dc5, king back towards the centre, and now Fe5. So now we find ourselves in in a, in a nice end game, and Black's uh, nice end game for White. Uh, and Black's very passive; is the, the bishop uh, doesn't have much scope. And again, this this pawn is still weak, and White's intending to sort of advance his king and then play knight f6. So there's not much Black can do about this. We played king d8. King f3. Um, if you play a move like uh, d4 check, which uh, sort of springs to mind, trying to give the um, trying to give this bishop some life, then uh, after king f4 takes king takes king e7, and now uh, knight f6, which is sort of a bit like the game. Uh, so the rook can't move because the bishop's on pre. So we'd have to take this and then. E takes f6, uh, king back because you've got to, you've got to cover the f7 square, and then the king simply walks in. There's just there's just nothing black can do. I right? just uh, at some point will um, you know play a4 and b5 and and uh, and, and just win and you know <laughs> just win the game basically. Um, so in the game, uh, Sugarov played king e8. And now knight check. And he could try king f8. Actually played bishop f6 here, which um, you know, it seems to categorically lose. But um, you know you, you could try this, and uh, uh, but it, it seems that even though white doesn't have to take the exchange, it, it does seem to be sufficient to win. For example, this, and then we can we can drop the rook back. So black's managed to get two pawns uh, for the exchange, and it's, it's not that open yet for the rook. But white could strike with b5 immediately, and then uh, rook b1, and then open up the uh, the a file. So we're threatening to play bishop b5, take here, and then have a fast a pawn. And for example, if if black tries to avoid this, then uh, white can still play c6, and eventually the the a pawn will be will be too strong. So in the game, Sugarov played uh, bishop f6. Bf6, and now again White's just threatening to to stroll his king in, which would be the last straw for Black because um, he can't move his king out the way to let the rook into the game. And so it's tied down to f7. There's no way to untangle his pieces, and White has all the time in the world. So uh, Sugarov played uh, e5. You could try, for example, d4 instead of that, but then. Um, just similar to a line we were looking at before, but with this time the, uh, the pawn's here already. And then d e3, king e3. Okay, say the, the lines are all a bit similar, but say black goes e5 to keep the king out. Then we go here, you know, very nicely targeting the f7 square, sort of attacked by um, these two pieces. And after rook f8, the only way to protect it. We can then play a4. So if you capture that, then again the king strolls in. So it's very similar to before. Uh, and if you don't capture it and make a move like e4, then b5 takes, takes, bishop d7, and again the, the king strolls in and, and it's all over. So in the game, Sanan tried e5, and now uh, Chitambaram played a Really nice looking move, e4, sort of opening it up. So again, d4 is very similar to what we've looked at. Uh, simply bishop e4, 
and then uh, and then sort of you know the king will eventually just stroll in and and win the game for white. So he played the move uh, d4 instead. Sorry, he played. Sorry, he actually played d takes e4. Yeah, sorry, I was looking at the line d4 there. Uh, so let me just do that clearer again. After e4, right? This this was the line which he he didn't play in the game. Yeah. But then but then bishop c4 uh, attacks f7, and then uh, rook f8, and bishop d5 is the point. See, although black looks as if he's managed to keep the position closed, um, it actually doesn't it doesn't work because. It's, if you sort of take a look at the position, black can't move anything. The um, the bishop's unable to move because um, uh, the pawn on b7 falls off, and the king can't move because then f7 drops, and the rook can't move again because f7 drops. So black would have to take on d5, and after e d5 we get this position. Uh, but again, the black the black pieces can't can't get active. There's no way to activate them. So for example, after here. I can play king e4. Again, we can't defend that because rook f7 occurs. And after this, white, white's just winning very easily. But I'll carry this on a bit further. d3. Uh, well, now the rook comes back. Now we can let the rook, black rook out because it doesn't matter anymore. Rook check. King back to d4. d2. Uh, rook d3. Stopping that. Uh, stopping that. Uh, rook e1. We can take. Rook to g1, and now white white sort of start pushing in the middle. King c6, and then king c3, intending d7, d8. King d7, rook e2, rook takes g5, and now we invade with rook e7, king back. Uh, flick a rook, uh, flick a, um, a check in first, force the king to b8, and then rook here now threatens to play rook f8, check king a7, d7. So king c8, and uh, you know, and this is all over. White can just play rook g7, and and then f7, winning. So in the game, Shigurov played d takes e4, bishop takes e4, and now rook f8, bishop c6, b c6, and now king e4. So there's nothing black can do. Play king d7. King takes e5. Rook e8 check. Now he dropped his king back to f4, so he's hitting um, hitting the f7 square. So he played rook f8. If um, Sanana tried uh, king e6 to try and remain active, then now the black rook comes back because the, the sorry the white rook drops back because the black rook can't invade. And say black tries to stay active, I'll just show a few lines here. Rook d3. Sorry, rook d3, and then if uh, king here, rook here, king b3, rook f7, king a3, and then uh, rook e7, followed by moving the king in, f7, and taking g6, and it's an easy win for white. To win the game, Sinan played rook f8, rook h3. Rook e8, and after rook e3, uh, he resigned because the, the king and pawn ending is hopeless. And if you move the rook away, then uh, then rook e7, uh, and again the king just strolls in. I'll just quickly show them the uh, something that could, you know if you played try and played this end game. Uh, you know, it's it's completely. Uh, uh, sorry, maybe it's actually better to play uh, king e5 first and then. Uh, Come back. E4. King here. King here. And if black tries to stay active, then uh, white's winning easily. Which is too far ahead. King b5 and king g5. And white queen's first. Okay, not 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 uh, the only line, but just shows you that white's just miles ahead in the race. So it was a really nice game by um, Chitambaram Aravind, uh, successfully beating Russian Grandmaster Sun and Sergeyev. Which took him on to uh, six and a half. But as I say, he was he was fourth. Although equal first, he was fourth on the tiebreak. And a wonderful result for Aydin Suleimanli. 
hope you enjoyed the game. Thanks for watching. If you did, uh, thumbs up and subscribe would be brilliant. Bye now.